Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here at Abel Cine in Burbank, California. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk about firmware 3.0 for the Airy Sky panels that are behind me. Uh, I have the 30 and the 60 with me here today. There's also the 120C, which is a longer fixture. Same output as the 60, but twice the length. I have been using these two lights in productions over the last year for things like commercial shoots, promos, corporate productions, and I absolutely love not only their build quality, but their versatility. And one of the reasons that they can do that is because they keep updating these lights with new features. They keep tuning them and adding more things. Love the fact that they can access over 300 Roscoe and Lee gels inside of the light, and that was available to us in prior firmware updates. In 3.0, I really want to talk to you more specifically about some of the color matching and also lighting effects that have been added to the fixture. Now, there are other features in there for lighting directors and that are DMX based, and there's also a new high speed mode, which is fantastic. But I want to concentrate on some of the things that I think a lot of people are going to be using on a daily basis. But before I do that, let's go ahead and go through the process of doing the firmware update for the light itself. So doing the firmware 3.0 update is actually very straightforward. You just need a memory stick, thumb drive, flash drive, and you need to download the firmware from Aries website, link below, and put that onto your memory stick. Just a little tip, make sure that your memory stick is formatted to FAT32. That's very, very important. And then I'm just going to go ahead and let me just pan the light around. And you will see under here, just below the DMX in on the light, there is a USB slot. And I'm just going to go ahead and insert my memory stick into there. And as soon as I do, we will be prompted here to update the firmware. I'm just going to go ahead and press in the intensity selector. And it's going to basically say it's going to copy that update. And then basically you just have to wait and then it will start the firmware update process. And you'll see here these little asterisks, they will show up and they will go from left to right. So right now it's almost done with that first part of the process of updating the firmware. And then you'll see that the actual fixture itself will go off. It's not actually outputting any light right now. It is verifying the file, it's you know flashing, the firmware and doing all the stuff that it needs to do. And you want to make sure you don't turn off the light when you're doing the firmware update, just like when you're updating the firmware on a camera system. And there it is. So now we are actually back up and I'll just turn the light up a little bit here. I am actually currently in the CCT mode or correlated color temperature mode. That's always been in the light. If you want to just quickly verify that you've updated to 3.0 and you don't want to dig into the menu systems, you can just use the mode button here because there used to be only three modes. There was CCT, HSI for hue, saturation, and intensity, and then there was also the gel mode. If I hit it again and I see source show up, that means we're definitely on firmware 3.0 or above because I'm sure we'll have future firmware versions. And it will then allow me to go into my source matching options. And then if I hit mode again, we go into RGBW. Now we could access and change the individual red, green, blue, and white LEDs on the sky panels remotely before. But right now, we can actually do it right here from the control panel on the light itself. Right now, let's go into source matching, because to me, as a DP, it is probably the most practical thing that I can use. Now, maybe not this right here, which is black light. But let's go into um, the options here, intensity selector, and I'm just going to go all the way to the top here. I'm actually in the fluorescent category. I'm going to turn my right dial all the way to the left, and I'm going to go into the first category of source matching lights, and that is incandescent. So under incandescent, I have tungsten bulb, and if I'm in tungsten bulb and then I press the selector, now I can go ahead and increase or decrease the intensity of that. My overriding color temperature, just so you know, for this video is tungsten. So as I start to change these colors, just keep that in mind in terms of the relationship to my white balance. So that's tungsten bulb. 
And now I'm going to change that to incandescent. We have halogen, antique bulb, warm antique bulb, Christmas lights, night light, infrared heat lamp, and grow light. And then I can now take this right dial and go into the second category of source matching, which is fluorescent. So the first one we have under fluorescent is soft white. We have bright white, cool white, daylight, cool white one, two, and three. And then we have warm white, and then the CFL black light, which we were looking at before. Third category, discharge style lights. So we have HMI, high pressure sodium, low pressure sodium, mercury vapor, metal halide, ceramic, carbon arc, xenon. And then the final category, which is the other category, so for source matching, this is for you know, other types of light sources. Um, candle, so this is source matching for candle light. We have gas fire, sun direct, sun overcast, sun blue hour, mobile phone, we have computer monitor, so if we wanted to simulate a computer monitor or the overriding color temperature was that and we wanted to match it, we could do that. Then we have electroluminance, blowtorch, road flare, amber caution, green traffic light, yellow traffic light, red traffic light. Really love those because we could actually just cycle through the three of those if we wanted to simulate something on camera. And we're obviously not looking at the light, but if we just want to feel those colors and somebody was stopping at nighttime and we wanted to simulate the traffic lights, put that up really high and we could just cycle through those, especially if you use the remote. You can actually use a really long USB cable and you have a remote unit which mimics this exactly, then you could go ahead and cycle through those. We've got blue glow stick, green glow stick, red glow stick, yellow glow stick, pink glow stick, violet glow stick. Now, I want to get into these lighting effects. So I'm going to go to menu and I am going to use the intensity selector knob and I'm going to go down to lighting effects. I will mention this now. When you go into lighting effects, in order to back out of the lighting effects, you are going to have to go in here and make sure that you select the off option. So I'm going to go again back into lighting effects and then I'm going to choose, let's choose party effect as our first one. And once we're in party effect, we can actually decide how much with the middle knob saturated that party effect's going to be. And we can also change the speed of it. So we have some control in terms of what we're doing. But it's cycling through the colors. I'll hit back. And now I can go into candle. Now we had candle for source matching as just a consistent output. That is a um, basically continuous output of candle light but it's not a gag effect. It's not going in and actually changing that candle effect so it feels like a candle that is burning. Now this middle knob will let me cycle through a warmer style candle. And in fact, let me just go ahead on the left knob here and turn up the intensity so you guys can see this. And again, remember that I am white balanced tungsten here. So this can read differently depending on your white balance. To my eye here, it's much, much warmer overall. And if I just go in here, I can choose a warmer, a more neutral version of that or a cooler version of that candle light. And then I can actually affect the speed, which is going to create variation in terms of that candle light and what it's going to basically look like. Then we're going to go in here. We have clouds passing. I love this one. There's an offset feature and also a speed option in terms of a parameter. And this is fantastic because if you were shooting in, uh, inside and you use clouds passing, put the light up pretty high and inside of your space and it would feel like the lights or the light that was coming through the window would be changing and would be simulating clouds passing. So clouds, fantastic effect. Um, club lights, I think that that is pretty self-explanatory. The nice thing here is that you can decide how many, not only the speed, but how many colors are actually being mixed together. And you can do three, you can do six, you can do all the way up to 24 different colors. And then over here, we're going to go down to color chase. We can change again the offset and the actual speed of that color chase. And that's just basically chasing through different colors. And one of the things that I want to mention, actually, let's just back off and go into something that would make sense for that. 
uh, let's just go back into club lights, is any time you're using one of these lighting effects, if you press the intensity selector button, it will pause it. So we'll see a P and a colon and then the name of that lighting effect, and then we can press it again and we can activate it. So you can actually go ahead and very easily cue when those lighting effects are coming on or off inside of your scene. So I really like that as well. So cop car, right now I'm on a blue only cop car light, but if I take this middle dial and I turn it, I can actually change that to blue and white, red and blue, depending on where in the world you are, I get red, blue and white, and then I can actually change basically um, the pattern of that. So this is single, you can see that each one of those red, blue and white um, basically lights are firing as single lights, one after the other in succession. And then I can go in here, we have quint all, and then we have quint, and then we have quad, and we have cycle, so it'll cycle through in this variety and stuff like that. So really fantastic as well, not just a straight, here's one cop car gag. Uh, fire, so we can go into fire here. Again, we can do warmer, neutral, or we can do cooler, and then we can change the speed in terms of simulating fire. Um, generally, you wouldn't have it at such a high intensity that I do here, but I just want you guys to see what that is. Go back here, then we have fireworks, and we can actually go in and choose basically different options uh, in terms of colors, or is it just white fireworks and the frequency of them. And then back here we go into light strobe, and so we can change the speed of your light strobe. We go back into, and now change it to lightning, and that has a frequency parameter and also a speed parameter. And I really like how the lightning gag is implemented in this light. It reads very naturally um, in terms of what you would feel if you were coming through a window. And of course, because these lights have such high intensity, um, they're really fantastic for that as well. And then going back and just show you paparazzi, we have a frequency parameter and we can change it from either a modern style flash or an older style, which would be a flash bulb. And you can see the difference in terms of how that's firing and the difference you know, in terms of the way that reads on camera. And then we've got pulsing and that's just a pulsing effect and you can change the span and the speed in terms of how it's pulsing. And then we have, of course, your television gag, which is very, very important. And that can be warmer, neutral, or cooler. And you can change the speed of that. Again, the intensity of that probably wouldn't be as high as it is right now in terms of what we're using. And those are your lighting effects. And again, um, you need to make sure that if you want to step out of these lighting effects that you go ahead and turn them off. And then you can now start to cycle through your normal uh, modes in terms of the light itself. And there are some additional features that you can read about by going to the link that's below to find out more about the 3.0 firmware update. But from a practicality standpoint, for me, it's all about source matching and those gag lighting effects. Thanks for watching.